Okay, this is my discovery from last year. Um, I have all the proof in the world, and I'll never get any credit for this. All the proof in the world, and then some, that I've finally solved the riddle of how birds navigate. Now you're going to say, oh, we knew how birds navigated. They navigated via magnetism. That's half the story. Descriptions are never explanations. Okay? How do they navigate via magnetism? Well, some pigeons, for example, have magnetite particles in their beak. Well, that seems like an explanation. Most birds don't actually have that in their beak. What all birds have in common, however, and human beings actually have it, and I experience this when I experiment over, over top of that ginormous $1,000, 30-pound monster magnet, your eyeballs actually feel because human beings have cryptochromes, that's what they're called, cryptochromes, in their eyes. Nothing to any level like birds have, however. Now, there have been all these absurd, asinine explanations like, well, we know birds navigate via magnetism. But how? There is no animal on this world that can actually see magnetism itself. What nobody else was able to conclude was is that what does magnetism influence such that birds are able to use it for navigation? Because it is absolutely 100% impossible for, for birds to see magnetism in and of itself. So how the hell were they navigating? Oh my god, there are some elaborate... Mother Nature is not a crazy hooker on crack. Now, I made this discovery well over a year ago. I knew this from my formula. I've actually got several formulas in my free book. I'm, I'm not selling anything. I've written seven books, by the way. One of them is an insanely popular, and I do mean insanely popular, book on magnetism. Here's actually a magnet, and I knew that a magnet, this is also the reason why seeds grow radically different when the seeds are exposed to centrifugal uh, north pole magnetism versus uh, centrifugal south pole magnetism. Guess which pole is which. Sure, I'm going to show you a graph here in a second. Guess which pole is which. I can tell simply by the color. Now, the guy that actually invented the ferro cell, I have two of them here, okay? This is the larger cell. I actually put a, uh, a block on the front of it to block out the excess light. Uh, Tim Vanderelli, who has many patents, he's a brilliant genius buddy of mine. This is the large, rather expensive ferro cell. Even he admits that no one else, when I called him up well over a year ago, I said, listen, I discovered something completely. Have you seen this before? No, he'd not seen it before. So even the guy who invented, brilliant person who invented the ferro cell, had never seen it before. This, this AM uh, phase shift, which I knew had to be there based on my formula of a magnetism. I've actually got four formulas that actually follow. Uh, it's actually called electromagnetic retardation. In other words, it's a phase shift. The simplest way of describing this, and I'll get to the secret of Mother Nature and how birds navigate here very, very quickly. The secret of Mother Nature is that around every magnet, and it doesn't matter how the magnet is shaped, there is a phase shift. What that means is that there is a phase differential, kind of like a pressure differential, that occurs at the exact same ratio if you're to take an egg and cut it in half. You know an egg has a fat bottom and a little pointy top. If you take that egg and cut it right in the middle, you'd end up with the bottom section being a ratio of 1.618033, so on and so forth, with the top ratio being 1. That means you have compression, on one pole and rarefaction on another. In other words, you have a ratio of 1 to 5. The compressed side will always be towards the blue shift. That's actually, there's a detailed explanation for that in my book, which is completely free on archive.org, by the way. It's also called electromagnetic retardation, but electromagnetic retardation was never discovered vis-a-vis -vis this. We've known about EMR, electromagnetic retardation, for a long time, but we had no idea until I discovered it, and I actually discovered it in my own formula. Then I actually found out the inventor of this ferro cell about a year later, and then I went looking for something that I knew must be there, and that's exactly where it was. This side you see is blue, this side you see is red. You can actually see another example of it here. You see the top side is blue shifted, and the bottom side is red shifted. Well, it just simply by looking at the coloration, we know that this is the South Pole and this is the North Pole. Okay, let's get to the secret. By the way, before I get to the secret, 
Mother Nature is really, really simple, by the way. I mean, how simple is Mother Nature? Really, really simple. There Now, since we knew that birds navigated via magnetism, there are the most absurd, complicated explanations for how... There's even one that says uh, there's like a quantum quantum magnetics that, you know, birds are simple. I, I grew up with birds. I've had a lot of bird pets. I'm very, very familiar with birds. A big bird lover. You know, that is what we call an insane convoluted explanation. Absolutely impossible. There's another one which seems kind of reasonable, but would never explain how a bird can navigate in bad weather as long as there's any light at all. Any. Even moonlight. Any, any, any light at all. And birds have big eyes, by the way. You know that, right? Even when it is pitch black outside, there is still some light creeping over the horizon. Not for human beings in total pitch darkness, but for birds, yes. So even when there's like no light at all, or like a heavy storm. You see, there's a, here's a, one of the uh, most accepted uh, explanations. And it's like, well, if you, if you go towards the north and south this way, like the, the earth curves towards the south pole here. and toward, It doesn't talk about coloration. No, 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 no. That is also an extremely convoluted explanation. By the way, the Earth's magnetism is not my premise. This is a hardcore fact. It's been known for a very long time, of course. The Earth's magnetic north pole is located in the south geographic pole, as you can see here. Okay, yeah, down in Antarctica is where the Earth's magnetic pole is, and up at the north pole is where the Earth's uh, magnetic south pole is. So to a bird, the geographic north looks blue, and towards the south... The actual, ge the actual physical south, not the magnetic south. Because the magnetic south is in the north, and the magnetic north is in the physical south. Towards the actual physical south of the earth, to birds, the light looks red. So when a bird's flying, this is how simple Mother Nature is. Vis-a-vis -vis the enormous amount of cryptochromes that exist in a bird's eye, and given the fact of my formula, which was totally my discovery, which I actually have tattooed here on the side of my hand. Totally my discovery. Absolutely wonderful. See, when I've actually mentioned this to people before, it's like, well, we knew the birds navigated via magnetism. No. That's not even half the story. How do they navigate via magnetism? These convoluted explanations not only have absolutely no proof for which I have right here. Oh, I've got proof galore, baby. Not only do they not have any proof, but their explanations make Mother Nature seem like she's a crazy hooker on crack. Birds, I mean, these, these theories of how birds navigate via or using magnetism, you know, are as convoluted as saying every bird's got like a magical calculator in their pocket and they use magnet, you know, no, 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 no. It is literally as simple as the cryptochromes in a bird's eye when a bird is flying towards the north, the physical north, they see blue. If they start heading towards the south, they start seeing red. A mix of the two, they know they're heading off to east or west. Okay? Very, very, very simple. You see this? Like if a bird was actually headed towards the North Pole, the physical North Pole, which is where the Earth's magnetic uh, South Pole is, it would see a blue shift at a rate of phi to 1. This would be phi and this would be 1. Simplicity is divinity. This is literally how birds navigate. I think I've got some other examples of it. I actually wanted to make some better pictures. I actually took these pictures tonight. This is actually just looking at one pole alone. You're actually able to see the RGB effects. I um, also made another discovery like a month ago, but uh, I since thought I would release them today, and I'm going to talk about this in the next video. But here you can see it. You see the north end? This uh, side of the magnet, this blue, that's actually the South Pole. This is the plane of inertia, this rainbow line right along the middle that goes from left to right, and obviously this is the uh, magnetic north of the magnet. There is literally a phase shift. Now we've known about EMR, electromagnetic retardation. We've known about phase shift. This has been known for some time. We had no idea, except for me, that... There is a phase shift on each and every... Even when Rawls and Davis were doing animal and worm and uh, seed experiments, 
They only knew that a North Pole affected critters and seeds one way, and a South Pole affected... They had no idea why. I'm the, the person that discovered why it is that way. I knew that there had to be an egg-shaped, and is literally egg-shaped, uh, compression and refaction on a coherent, polarized, i.e. magnet. What defines a magnet denotatively is coherency of the polarization. In any typical matter like this or the tabletop, I mean, the magnetic poles of the atoms are going every which way. This is the same difference between a light and a laser. What defines the difference between a light and a laser? Coherency. What defines the difference between a magnet before it becomes a magnet, one millisecond before it becomes a magnet, and a millisecond after? One thing only. Field coherency. It's kind of like the old Roman uh, symbol of the sticks that are bound together. You know, a single stick by itself is meaningless, but when you bind them all together, they become unbreakable. In other words, the, the, uh, the total is more than the sum of the parts. It's like literally, when we talk about field coherency, and the Earth has a gigantic bar magnet, not literally, of course, the Earth has a gigantic bar magnet through it. When we talk about field coherency, one and one and one and one do not equal five. They literally equal like eight or nine. In the case of field coherency, that's exactly the case. Like a 5-watt light bulb is, is useless. They don't even make 5-watt light bulbs that I know about. It's useless. A 5-watt laser, however, it will burn a hole in your ass. Literally, like that. I mean, you might even have to go to the hospital. 5-watt li watt light bulb, useless. But you make that completely coherent, which means it has a locus of emanation and then it becomes exponentially powerful. And then you don't have 10 ones, which would equal 10. You have 10 ones, which equal 50 or 60. So anyway, the cryptochromes in a bird's eye, Mother Nature is really, really, really damn simple. The universe and the way it works is really simple. Unfortunately, human beings are really, really, really damn stupid. Okay, everybody's going around trying to figure out how to get rich, how to get laid, how to screw somebody over, or get screwed, or screw somebody. You know, we don't think about the important things, you know? That's why, that's why uh, people like the ancient Greeks and the ancient Egyptians like amaze. It's like, they're, oh my God, they were so smart back then. It's no, they actually cared about important stuff, whereas your lazy, stinking ass is snarfing a cheeseburger and playing Nintendo games. Human beings have intellectually de-evolved, okay? That's an undeniable fact, by the way. So anyway, this is the secret of how birds navigate. It is my discovery, my discovery entirely. I'm obviously not the person that discovered the fact that birds navigate via magnetism, but I am the person that has explained, and I'm the only person that has the evidence for the fact, and this is reproducible by anybody, there is a phase shift on each and every magnet at a ratio of phi to one. The only thing the poor little bird's doing is when it's flying, if it sees a red light, it's no, it knows it's headed towards the uh, magnetic uh, north pole, which is located in the geographic south of the Earth. If the poor little birdie sees blue light, it knows it's heading towards the geographic north, which is where the magnetic south pole is. Okay? How simple is that? You want to talk about simplicity being divinity and Occam's razor, like the simplest explanations are usually the true ones. This is Occam's razor. This is Occam's razor <laughs> in, a, in highest clarity and fidelity. Little birdie flies along and the cryptochromes in their eyeballs. They see blue light. They know they're headed towards the geographic north. They start turning and they see red light. The, the more the intense the red light gets, as it reaches maximum intensity, they know they're heading due south. Everything else is navigating along, like the seashore, how do birds navigate. I mean, once they can actually see north and south, everything else is just major landmarks. It's like, there's the gigantic, of course, birds don't think like that, but I mean, they're thinking like, oh, super gigantic rock formation, okay, I... I, uh, I took, you know, I took 10 degrees. They're not thinking in degrees either, of course, you know. I turned towards the blue light after seeing gigantic rock, meaning the mountains, for example. You know, then, 
then bird navigation becomes as stupid and as simple and as easy if you have cryptochromes, enormous amounts of cryptochromes in your eyeballs, which you and I don't have, it becomes as easy as a baby slobbering and pooping on itself. I mean, it becomes, it's like, oh my God, how do these birds navigate thousands of miles? You know, a bird's brain is like that. Everybody says, oh, bird brain, right? Bird brain, birds still do have bird brains. <laughs> the secret is, is that Mother Nature is really, really, really simplex. And navigation for birds, this is how it works. And it's really, really simple. All, you know, we knew that birds navigated via magnetism, but I'm the person that has actually told you, and I'm the person that discovered this, of how they navigate via magnetism. Thank you so much for watching. One of nature's great mysteries has been solved by me. If you like this video, you could uh, drop me a pizza or two or five bucks or slap me in the face or tell me to jump off a cliff. Thank you for watching. Adios. Do svidania. And as the Russians would say, uvidimsya. And I'll never get credit for this discovery, by the way. Never happen. <laughs> Even though I have all the proof in the world.